Welcome back to Ordinary Faith YouTube channel and our video that goes with the message shift in our earner to error series where we learn today that our failures are already factored in. You know, let's start with a, an honest truth. Everybody loves a good honest truth, right? Uh, I mean, not me, but I'm sure everyone else does, right? The Word of God says this in Isaiah. All of us like sheep have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. Man, every single one of us is a hot mess. I think that's uh, kind of the play on words. We were a mess, and that's why God sent a Messiah. Something about Jesus can straighten out our messes. If you were to read Hosea 1 and 3, Hosea chapter 1 and Hosea 3, you would find this incredible story of God's redemptive mercy. When God told his prophet Hosea to go and marry a prostitute, it's a, uh, it's a painful story. It's, it's uncomfortable and awkward to even read. Hosea goes and finds a woman named Gomer. Uh, not a name you'd probably want to adopt in our culture for your baby girl. Gomer was a prostitute, and he marries her out of prostitution. I I'm sure there was hope that she would never return, but that's not what happened. They had children. Um, the text seems to indicate that they weren't even Hosea's children. And God uh, gave those children names. that it, That's for another study, but it indicates just how far God's willing to go to love us and receive us. But our focus today is on Gomer because she left Hosea. It appears she left the kids too. And she went back into prostitution and it appears that she ended up in slavery. Hosea 3 says this, The Lord said to me, Go and love your wife again, even though she commits adultery with another lover. This will illustrate that the Lord loves Israel, even though the people have turned to other gods and love to worship them. How low can you go and God still come and get you? I don't know. I have no idea how bad it can get. But I suspect if you're listening to this video or you attend uh, one of Ordinary Faith's services and you hear this message, I will assume that you haven't sunk too low as yet. <laughs> I would assume there's still room. Somehow, God sent this prophet after this woman who had just trashed their relationship. And he uses that as an illustration of his own pursuit of us and how unworthy the nation of Israel was for his pursuit. And yet he pursued them not because they were worthy, but because he was and is a lover and he knows how to love. How, how low do you have to get before God says that's too low? How far do you have to get away from home before God stops coming to find you? I don't know, but again, I suspect that if you're hearing this video or you attend one of our services and you hear this message, that there's still room in your spectrum somewhere because apparently if you hear this and you listen to it in whatever way you do, apparently God is still pursuing you. So I don't know how far. I know I got pretty far at a season in my life. I know that in that season of my life when I told God that I was tired of being good, I wanted to have fun, that in that season where I disrespected him and everything he taught me through my parents and my church, that his grace was so good that I found the greatest gift of my life during that season, that gift being my wife. I don't know how far God will go other than is what's demonstrated on the cross itself. So. There's hope is what I'm trying to say. I'm saying that your failures are factored in. I'm saying that if you've wandered from God, if you've been baptized, started church, and you fell out, I did that, there's still hope. There's still a way back home. There's still a God pursuing you. You see, Hosea demonstrated what forgiveness really was. First of all, he demonstrated the real business of forgiveness. Can you imagine that walk? Because, you know, he didn't have a car, you know, a few thousand years ago. Can you imagine that walk from his house with the abandoned kids and all of his troubles and all of his burdens to go find Gomer? Can you imagine the introspection, the, the reflection, the anger, the bitterness, the sorrow, the rejection that he would have had to deal with to go and buy his wife out of slavery? I, what I'm trying to tell you is, is that forgiveness is real business. Forgiveness 
It is so many people think that when you forgive someone, you basically just forget it and move on. Just just forget it. Just forgive. That's not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is acknowledging a hurt. It's actually dealing with the grief and the pain that the the offense has caused. And, you know, sometimes it means confronting people, but sometimes confronting people doesn't even help in the matter of forgiveness. And you still have to work through what has happened. It's forgiveness is real stuff. It's not just ignoring problems. It's not. It's not cowardly either. When Hosea got to Gomer and he paid this slave's price for her, he had to pay a price for her. Someone has to pay for forgiveness. That's the truth. Someone always has to pay for it. But here's the thing. We think we're paying for it. That's, the, that's where b- bitterness comes from. This is where unforgiveness lies. We think people owe us a debt. Well, they don't. They don't. That's, the Bible says, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. <laughs> Now, you said, how does that apply to forgiveness? Because all offenses are actually against God. And on top of that, all offenses are wrapped up in the forgiveness that God offers. God paid the ultimate price to forgive. Not you, not me. God paid the price. I'm not saying forgiveness is easy because of it. I'm just saying that God is really good and we forgive because God forgives, not because people owe us debts. And we need to remember that it's the goodness of God that helps people, that leads people to repentance. Let me share this verse out of Romans. Don't you see how wonderfully kind, tolerant, and patient God is with you? Does this mean nothing to you? Can't you see that his kindness is intended to turn you from your sin? Man, Gomer didn't deserve a husband to come find her. You and I don't deserve a God to put his son on a cross for us. We sure don't deserve a God to come and find us in our worst moment and turn our lives around. But that's exactly the kind of stuff that God did and that God is doing right now. God is after us. God loves us. God is out to find the people who have no love and give them love. To find a people who have no family and bring them into his family. God is good. We seek God because he's so good and so wonderful. Because he actually satisfies. Now what are we going to do about this? What will you today do about this today? Well, I say today's a great day to come home. That's what I say. I say that if God is pursuing us, let's stop making it hard on him. And let's turn back around and make it easy on God to find us. Come and let us return to the Lord. He has torn us in pieces. Now he will heal us. He has injured us. Now he will bandage our wounds. When you turn to God, when you turn to Jesus, you turn away from the sin that is you can never get enough of, and you turn to Jesus who truly satisfies, you enter into a forgiveness that God has for you, that God has prepared for you. You are forgiven. Why? Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.21, God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin. God has paid for our sin. This is what God has done. And what God has done is so much more than what you could ever do. Your worst sin is covered in God's amazing act of love. His journey to deal with the offense that we levied against him. To find us and buy us out of bondage to sin. Let me close with one last thought. God went to Hosea and he asked him to do something extraordinary. He had Hosea demonstrate the love of God. And that, my friends, is what we need to do. If you have returned to God and you are at peace with God, then it's time to demonstrate what God is like to other people, to present the gospel, yes, in our words, never less than our words, but also by our actions, to demonstrate that God wants people to come back to him. One last verse. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. There you go. Thanks for tuning in today. May God bless you. And if you need a pathway home, message us on whatever app you found us on. We'll get back with you and we'll help you come back to God.